we continue with crown my year with your goodness whatever god has in store for you between now at midnight it shall be delivered in the name of jesus christ i say it shall be delivered in the name of jesus christ in psalms 65 and verse 11 psalms 65 and verse 11 the bible says it's a scripture we've read reread and read again the bible says you crown the year with your goodness and your parts drip with abundance i'm glad to let you know that in the year 2024 your parts will drip with abundance in the name of jesus christ somebody say a better amen as i get into a brief word but actually it's not a a new word it's a recap i want to do a recap of the teaching i did crown my year with your goodness chapter two chapter two i think it was, it was on a wednesday a wednesday unusual miracle service chapter two i want us to do a recap just three things and then we get into a serious time of prayer somebody say amen you crown the year with your goodness and your parts drip with abundance and we say the word crown means to surround to surround in other words the will of god for you and for me and i want you this scripture to create an expectation for the year 2024 the will of god for you and for me is to surround the entire year from january to december with his goodness and the parts the daily operations of the year to be dripping abundance the way honey drips to be dripping abundance and uh, we spoke three facts about god's goodness which i want us to just mention and then we get into prayer number one we say god has promised to release good things for them who walk uprightly god has promised to release good things for them who walk uprightly in psalms 84 and verse 11 psalms 84 and verse 11 the bible says for the lord god is a sun and shield and we can talk much about that the lord will give grace and glory no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly amen and we spoke and said upright living makes you a magnet of god's goodness upright living upright living and we attempted to define what is upright living upright living is being a man or a woman of integrity is being a man who never engages in ways that defiles either the body the soul or the spirit of a man upright living is having an intimate sincere genuine walk with god upright living upright living and the bible says there is no good thing will he withhold from those who walk upright that is to say that for those who don't walk uprightly there are things god withholds and there's somebody here you'll only have one resolution 2024 no fornication here it's quiet here it's getting so quiet today i don't know why yeah yeah you're going to have 20 only one resolution 2024 no watching pornography here yes yeah 2024 no masturbation here yeah 2024 no something here just you write it somewhere and commit and then we meet at the end of the year and see how far your life will be shining how far your life will be shining Amen. 2024 just when i told him you only one have one resolution 2024 no alcohol i told him repeat 2024 no alcohol <laughs> i just turned it into a revival Amen. can i hear somebody say hallelujah no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly somebody here will say 2024 tithing every coin here that's all 
every coin I receive, I'll tie it 2024. Yeah, maybe let me paraphrase it. 2024, no robbery to God here. Amen. <laughs> 2024, I'm not going to have get a, get a God. I'm not getting God. 2024. Am I communicating? Some of you will say, 2024, no missing church here. Yeah, no missing church here. I challenge you to have only one resolution 2024. Yeah. And let the Holy Spirit dictate it. And that resolution will become the pathway for abundance. I say abundance. One resolution. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah? I did a study of this separation and, and I saw something very interesting. Would you like to know? The word separate here connotes that your sins have caused God to withdraw his support, his grace, and his blessings from you. <laughs> it's, like, it's like somebody who's been sending you sponsorship money from the U.S., and all of a sudden they withdraw. Yeah. And he says, because of your sins, I have withdrawn my support. And let me tell you, when God is not supporting you, you have no support. For the help of man is vain. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, without me, not you do it true. You can do nothing. Yeah. Without me, you can do nothing. In other words, that scripture says, whenever you engage in sin, God excludes himself from being actively involved in the affairs of your life. So when you become one, you become the treasure of heaven. You shall be the treasure of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why some people, you cannot destroy them. God says, you're destroying, I only have two here, and you want to destroy them? I'd rather destroy you. <laughs> yeah, because I don't have so many like him. I don't have so many like her. If you try to bring and no, 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 I'd rather kill you. Because I, I don't have such. Become the kind of a person that God defends because he can't get many like you. The mystery behind the stagnation of people, it is lack of upright living. He who covers anyone who hides his sins will never do well. But God gives us a very powerful good news. But God will forgive. Somebody say, God will forgive. If, if you allow your sins to ground you, it is your fault because forgiveness is available. Yeah. Forgiveness is available. God will forgive somebody if he agrees that he has done wrong things and if he turns away from his sins. Yeah. I've, I've sought repentance so many things, so many times. Forgiveness of sins so many times. I'll say something, the Holy Spirit will tell me, you didn't say well. Immediately I'll tell him, I'm sorry. Please, Holy Spirit, forgive me. Forgive, forgive my terrible humanity, Lord. Please cleanse me from that. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Yeah? Yeah. I, I've seen somebody and I, if I feel something that looks like jealous, I repent there and then. Yeah. Is anybody who has ever felt some tinge of jealousy anywhere? In anything? Any jealousy anywhere? Or jealousy is not making you to talk? Is it, is it too... too? <laughs> Jealousy. You look, you look at your sister and you're like, mm -hmm. there are some people who cannot even clap when we are clapping for people who are getting married. They're like, what, what did they do to the Lord? <laughs> what is special about what you're telling us? And, and the way I've been fasting. You see, that is jealousy. What you need to do is to ask God, Father, cleanse my heart, purify my heart. Yeah, purify. That, I, I'm saying that to say none of us is beyond repentance. Yeah, the preacher repents so many times. Yeah, if I hear something from anyone and I feel something funny, immediately I go to repentance because I know that's the darkness of my heart. The Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. The heart of a man is wicked. Yeah, the, the, the wickedness is in, the, in desperation levels. <laughs> it's not just, it is in desperation levels. Hey. Tell somebody next to you, you look so smart. Just kill jealousy, dog. Just tell them you look so smart. I, I will, ooh, you look so amazing. My goodness. Wow. I like your hair. Oh, please. <sighs> wow. You know, jealousy can cause you to sit next to a sister with nice hair and you feel like pulling it. 
feel like pulling it and throwing it to the ground, stepping on it. Why do you have some nice hair here? What are you trying to show? And I've told you before, and I, 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 I didn't want to tell you, but the way you're looking at me, I feel like telling you that jealousy is one class before you graduate to become a witch. <laughs> It's the unit. It's the unit just before you graduate to become a witch. In, in, in the academy of wizardry, sorcery, <laughs> one of the units is jealousy. When you graduate in jealousy, you then <laughs> tell someone next to you, I'm not jealous at all. I'm not jealous. At all. By the way, I want you to know if God is blessing your neighbor, it means God is in the neighborhood. And if God is in the neighborhood, you are next in line. Your testimony is coming. Glory be to God. So don't feel jealousy because yours is next. And by the way, 2024, so many weddings are going to happen. I say so many weddings are going to happen. I don't know why single people you are making me feel so idle. I am, my Saturdays are so idle. I want to officiate so many weddings. You are says coming in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are going to dedicate so many cars this coming year. By the way, the parking has your car there. It has your car there. And, and your car is among the best. It's among the best. It's among the best. Hallelujah. I can see it. I can see it. Wow. And your wife's car is looking nice. Hallelujah. Receive that blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. And there are people that God is going to empower you to upgrade your car in the year 2024. Just the goodness of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, God's goodness gravitates towards those who fully depend on him. God's goodness gravitates towards those who fully depend on God. Lamentation 3 and verse 25. Lamentation 3 and verse 25. The Bible says the Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him. The word wait there means to depend on. Are you still here? Yeah, to depend on. Which means to place your confidence fully on God. To place your hope fully on God. To trust the Lord with all your heart regarding all sectors of your life this coming year take away every idol of a man take away every idol stop saying things like you're my last hope stop worshipping men this coming year if you want God's goodness to gravitate towards your life nobody is your last hope it is Christ in you the hope of glory <laughs> am I communicating Yeah. stop saying if you don't support me I'm dead stop saying those kind of things Amen? Yeah, stop placing your confidence in man. The Bible says, cast is the man who places their confidence in man. But blessed is the man who places their confidence in God. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Year 2024, let your eyes be fixed on God. He doesn't fail. He doesn't fail. And if somebody withdraws their support, don't get disappointed. At least the source has not been withdrawn. Any man being used of God to be a blessing to you is a resource. The source is Jehovah God. And if the resource is taken away, God can plug another pipe. And the flow will continue. So keep your eyes on the source. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Yeah. Don't begin to kneel down begging people. No, no, no. Worship only the Lord. Worship him only. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? Don't beg. If somebody decides to leave you after you talk to them, you try to convince them and they are committed to God, let them go. Let them go. If they're decided they don't want the relationship, you've tried to tell them, you've tried to give them 10 reasons why they should stay, 15 reasons why it is important to, 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 to be around you, 16 reasons what, what, of what they are losing when they walk away and they're still committed to God, tell them it's okay. Let me give you some fear. Let me give you something to buy some snacks on your way out. <laughs> Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? In the name of Jesus Christ, 2024, we refuse to worship men. I say 2024, we refuse to worship men. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? 
if I try to speak to you to stay, I try to beg you to stay and you're committed to God, I'm going to release you. God bless you as you go. And may God prosper you wherever you're going. I refuse to worship a man. The Lord is my help and my salvation. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? I want to speak to the sisters 2024. We don't need a sponsor. Jehovah is our sponsor. We don't need a Godfather. Jehovah is God the Father who is always on our side. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? I want to speak to the great sisters of this church. You shall never use your body to pay your bills. I say you never use your body to pay your bills. You are better than that. You are smarter than that. You are valuable than that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? So keep your eyes on God. Tell somebody keep your eyes on God. In the book of Psalms 125, give it to me please. Psalms 125, give it to me. The Bible says, let's read together one to God. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. Those who trust in the Lord. Keep your trust in the Lord. You shall be unmovable, unshakable. Receive unshakable position. I say receive unshakable position. Receive unshakable position. Those who trust in the Lord. There is no man who have kept my eyes on till I got to heaven as a pastor. This church has no sponsor. Nobody we call a sponsor or oh, the one who he doesn't do what the church will do, whatever, whatever, whatever. You do, you don't do. Things continue because the source is permanent and our eyes are on him. The Bible says he kept his eyes on him and his face was radiant and he never suffered shame. Men who keep their eyes on God will never suffer shame. I prophesy today, you will never suffer shame. Every stench of reproach, it is cut off from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes on God. Tell somebody, keep your eyes on God. Tell somebody else, keep your eyes on God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Glory be to God. Number three, and then we pray, God's goodness gravitates towards those who believe. Those who believe. Those who believe. Psalms 27, verse 13 to 14. We're just doing a recap. Hallelujah. Psalms 27. You know one day somebody came to my, <laughs> somebody came and told me something. He told me, Pastor, that person was doing so well financially. He told me, Pastor, anytime you're in trouble, are you understanding? Anytime you're in trouble, they were, they, they, because God was blessing them and we were celebrating the blessings of God. He said, Pastor Dan, anytime you're in trouble, so me, Dad, anytime you're in trouble, or is anytime you can call me. I told him, then I'll never call you. <laughs> <laughs> Then I said, then I'll never call. I just said it as it, it, it was spontaneous. Then I'll never call you because I don't get into trouble. And if I get into trouble, I know who to call. Yeah. <laughs> I know who to call. I know who to call. Today, they are not doing well financially. So I'll be wondering if they are the one who I was calling. Who would I be calling today? If they are the ones who I used to call. Who would I be calling today? One day, some people gather and say, Pastor, we don't like the, you know, through you, God has blessed us. Through you, we're driving big cars. Through you, we build houses. Because of your teachings and the anointing, the grace of God upon our life. We can tell because we were somewhere for so many years. And since we came, a few years, few months, things are changing. We don't like the house you're living in. We want to gather up and we want to be paying you rent in a particular place. I asked them a question through my wife because they never came to me. They didn't have the courage to come straight. So I asked, I told, go and ask them, is it affecting my delivery of the word? Am I pastoring them well? Yes. Are they happy with the pastoral? Is there something I need to improve? They said nothing. Then tell them when it comes to my upkeep, the one who called me is responsible. They are not responsible. They are not responsible. The one who called me is responsible. If he feels the house is too tiny, he'll take me to a bigger one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we together? Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I mean, one of the person who, who, who very dear, wonderful son among the committee. Today he's, he's going to be with the Lord. So if, where would my rent be coming from? Yes? Where would my rent be coming from? Today he's going to be with the Lord, one of the dear sons who was part of the committee. And it was out of a good will. Are we together? It was out of, we don't like, we want our pastor to look powerful and to have money. We don't like the way he's living. 2024, keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. When Jesus found that that house is too tiny because we didn't used to come out, we used to pour out. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? We used to do what? Pour out. Pour out. When he saw that the house is too tiny and we're not fitting, then he took me to a bigger one. You see, the reason why I love him taking me there, because if he takes me there, he can sustain me. If he takes me there, he can sustain me. I tried once to take myself up to the Mercedes level. You all know the story. I don't like giving the story. I don't want, I don't want heartbreak on 31st of December. I tried to take myself there. Yeah. Today I have two of those cars upgraded, so far upgraded, but I don't feel nothing. I don't feel nothing. I don't sweat. I don't think about it. It's not a prayer item. I don't pray, Father, fuel for this week, for this. I tried to take myself there. I was not able to sustain myself there. Even these, <laughs> they were sent by the Lord <laughs> to teach me manners, to teach me manners. And manners I learned. Then I said, in my life, I'll never promote myself. All I'll do is to humble myself <laughs> so that he can lift me up. Because if he can lift me up, he will sustain me there. In 2024, God will lift you up. I say, God will lift you up. He will cause you to drive a car that is bigger than yourself. He will cause you to live in a house that is bigger than yourself. And because he's taking you there, he will sustain you there. I say he will sustain you there. Yeah. Did I tell you 2024 I'm coming with a bottle of oil to anoint the house that you build? Yeah. The house that you built yourself by the help of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell somebody next to you, keep your eyes on God. He will never fail you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I see the goodness of God breaking out of your life. The goodness of God will always manifest in the lives of those people who believe. Somebody say, I believe. Mark 9, 23. Mark 9, 23. The Bible says, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to, think, to him who does what? All things. How many things? All. Some things. All. Many things. All, all things are possible. Don't tell me you're 50 years old and you can't get married. If you still desire, God can give it to you. Just believe. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Uh, the preacher who came for the DOZ, the lady, Dr. Sidi, got married at what age? At 60 years old. 60 years old, she got married. Yeah. You are 35 and stressed. <laughs> Receive the joy of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> there are even some of you you have seen three white hairs three three white hairs and you are depressed and it's not even age it is genes <laughs> and you are depressed there's somebody believe no matter how many times you have been heartbroken belief God will give you a new season yeah he says I would have fainted I almost gave up I almost felt like everything has collapsed until I changed my trajectory and I began to believe that I'm going to see the goodness of God. Change your trajectory and believe God will do you good. Don't just expect calamities. Every time you see, you hear the phone call, don't just think it's the landlord. Think it's somebody from the US. Expect. Can I hear somebody say amen? expect, expect expect a job, expect a promotion expect favor, come on somebody, expect glory expect open doors don't just expect negative things, somebody say amen, amen. every time I hear the message, I expect in person 
Yeah. When I go there, I just, I'm expecting Mpesa. And by the way, your Mpesa will always be full. I say your Mpesa will always be full. Hallelujah. Expect Mpesa. Expect somebody to be spoken of to just be a blessing to you. Glory be to God. When somebody says, I want to meet you, don't expect motion air. Expect a surprise. Yeah. Expect a surprise. Expect. He says, I almost gave up, but I changed my expectation. I changed my expectation. This year, 2024, only expect good. I say, only expect good. And every arrangement of evil for you in the year 2024, today it is dead. That arrangement is dead. In the name of Jesus Christ. Expect to meet your girlfriend. Yeah. Everywhere you go, expect to meet somebody ordained to marry you. Expect. Expect. And sisters, don't be nasty. Just be nice. He could be the one. Just be nice to everyone. You never know. Some entertained angels by entertaining strangers. Somebody say amen. You know, one sister told me the other day she was in, de in, in duress. She didn't manage to pay Chama. Yeah? Men, I think we need Chama. Men. <laughs> but I don't think we can do well. Anyway. They had a Chama and there are those Chamas if you don't pay money on time, there is penalty, something like that. And she was, she was like one of the daughters was giving me the testimony. She was feeling so depressed and so bad. And she was going to the chama. She was actually walking for the meeting. And she was wondering, what do I do now? Because if you don't pay, it's a big deal. And a drunkard, a drunkard, yes, came and said, sister, hey, you're beautiful. She's married. You're beautiful. How can you attack you? And of course, the drunk is a drunk man. So he said, Unanio, Unanio, Ata Unijui. Unanio, Ata Unijui. Yeah, Unanio, Anina, Ata Unijui. Then I come and be like, hey, Sini, me kupenda, Sini kuoe. So the sister, of course, ignored the drunk man, but the drunk man followed, followed her. They just kept, even though they were walking, you know. <laughs> and the guy is speaking things that don't make sense. You know, but I think she decided I'm not going to, I'm just going to ignore this guy. Then the guy said, Ha, So, so I think she called somebody, somebody called her and sent her money. Now, the remaining amount, I, I hope I'm giving the testimony accurately, was 1100 to top up for the charmer money. Because somebody called and gave her money there. A miracle, another miracle. So she, she was in def deficit of 1100. So the guy said, ah, minaske kukubariki. So the guy gave her 500. So the sister said, unani bariki ya? She said, why you kuwa pesa? Why you just told him mingi? Why you kuwa pesa? So she put, then after a few more steps, the guy gave her another 500. So minaske ya kubariki. How much is remaining? So that when she got to the exit, the guy said, hey, please, stop, 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 stop. And the guy removed 100 and gave up. Expect miracles from anywhere, 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 anywhere. Exact amount from a drunk man. Yeah. Because if believers are not usable, God will use drunk people. <laughs> will use anybody to bless me. I see blessing breaking out in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. From every corner, the blessings of God will pursue you and overtake you. Somebody make some noise. Yeah.